Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Now, you probably ask the same, well, there's a new covenant, right? I thought, oh no? Okay. If you, we should be following that, right? Yeah, we should be following that. Just question, so do you guys do animal sacrifices in the temples too? Christ is our sacrifice, right? So do we have to sacrifice? Because we believe in the new and the old. Yeah, I know. Christ came to do away with what law? Did he came to do away with all laws or some laws? Well, which ones? Okay, let's get it. I'm going to show you, okay? I guess what I'm getting he at... Not. Well, what I'm getting at is... How do we know which laws to follow in the Old Testament versus the New Testament? I'm about to show you right now. I'm about to show you right now. Because... Um, in the Old Testament, everything was prophesied that would that would come when Christ came, right? And there's never a law. As a matter of fact, give me that um, magnify the law in in, uh, in Isaiah. There's not one scripture in the Old Testament that prophesies the laws being done away with. But there are scriptures in, in the Old Testament that prophesy sacrifice being done away with. And what was Christ? The Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice. Right or wrong? Right, he has the ultimate sacrifice. Okay, go ahead. So how, do you, how do you view that Christ came to fulfill or complete? Ah, uh, that, hey, that, Jay, I like you, Jay. I like you, Jay. You don't even know me. I like you, Jay. That's a, that's a great question, man. That's a great question. I like that. I, we're we're, 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 we're going to get that right now. That's Isaiah. Where, I mean, where's Matthew. our curbs, our bumpers? I got you. And our A's to Z's on the completion of the law. I got you. I got you. Let's read this really quick, and then I'm going to jump there really fast. Go ahead. Okay. Isaiah 42, 21. Now, this is the Old Testament. Read. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness' sake. Uh -huh. He will magnify the law. You see that? It says he will magnify the law. When you magnify the law, does it diminish? Is it gone? No, it's it's being uh, pushed even stronger, even harder. Just like in Hebrews when it says, if you sin under Moses, you die without mercy. But if you sin under Christ, you have a worse punishment. Doesn't mean the law is done away with. It means it's magnified. You got it? I got it. How do you feel magnified. about how do you feel about Christ's interaction with the Pharisees and some of the things that he told them? That you think that he came to refute them? Did he claim to say that you're practicing false religion? No, no, no. We'll, we'll actually get into that. Because um, the the Pharisees were what? It starts with an H. They would do it, but but they they would say it, but not do it. They were hypocrites. But we'll get into that. Matthew chapter 5. But, I mean, you, you have some great questions. I want to be able to follow each one. I got you. You know what I'm saying? I want to hit this Matthew 5. I don't mean to jump on C when we're on A. You, so, you're good. You're good. Uh, I understand. You, I guess, you got a lot. Go on. What I'm getting at with that one is... Uh, uh -huh. Jesus had his interaction with the Pharisees and with the, Jew, with the Jewish leaders. Mm -hmm. What was his objective? What do you think his objective was? Uh, we'll show you that right after these messages. Not playing. We'll show you that right after this, all right? All right? Yeah. 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 Matthew 5 or 17. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. So don't think that I came to destroy the law, like you said, right? Read. Or the prophets. What does that part mean? Or the prophets. What does that part mean? Because everybody, when they read that scripture, only focuses on the law. You know what the law and prophets means, right? When they say that, what they were referring to? What's that? What do, what do you understand it to be? No, no, I'm trying to understand what you mean by that. Because you asked me what I mean, what I, what I think about that. Everybody that reads that scripture only focuses on the law. They say, see, the law is complete or, f or uh, uh, fulfilled. To my theological understanding, when we refer to the law and the prophets, it's the whole of the Old Testament. Right. So, if he's saying, don't think I came to destroy the law or the prophets, that would mean what's written in the prophets, right? That would be prophecies. Correct? Minor in nature. 
Okay, so the prophecies that that are still that still have to come to pass, right? Yes. Well, okay. go ahead. I'm listening. Go ahead. I am not come to destroy. Jay, Jay, you gotta listen though. You gotta I'm, listen, Jay. I'm, I'm listening. All right, I know his armbands are dope, but you gotta listen though. Watch this. Yes. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So if he didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets, you're saying he came to fulfill. That would mean that all the things that are written in the prophets have been fulfilled too. Have they? No. Right. So that does that mean that the law is, has been fulfilled? No. Because they're both included in the same statement. Water. Let's keep reading. Watch, watch, I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm going show, to show you the rest of it. We got to keep reading. All right, read. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. There's the heavens. We're on the earth. Read. One jot or one tittle. One point, one comma, one anything in the law. Read. Shall in no wise pass from the law. Nobody's going to pass from it. Nothing, none of the law is going to be wiped away with. Read. Till all be fulfilled. All has not been fulfilled. There's still a whole bunch of the prophecies that have to come to pass. Read on. No, no, you Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Now we can look at the law of the pants, the law of the fringes, the law of the Sabbaths, the law of wearing a beard, the law of keeping high holy days. We can look at those as least commandments. But Christ says, whoever, right? A lot of Christians like that, whosoever were. But Christ says here, whoever does what? And shall teach. No, say it for the top. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. If you break one of these least commandments, if you're shaving your beard, you're not wearing fringes, you're not keeping the high holy days. Read. And shall teach men so. And how do you teach men to break these laws? By either word or by your example. That's how that's two ways you can teach people. So if you teach men so, read. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Whoever does these and teaches people to do them like we are out here doing. Because they didn't have Colossians and Galatians when Christ was teaching. Neither when they had the, the, the disciples or the apostles when Peter and Paul was teaching. They were reading from the Old Testament. So they were teaching to do the commandments. Whosoever shall do and teach them. Read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Uh -huh. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness, if except your righteousness, Jay, read, shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. This goes into your point. If your righteousness does not, if your righteousness does not exceed the uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, why? Because the scribes and the Pharisees were hypocrites. Pause right there, really quick. I'm going to hit this point because it's going to go, you asked two questions. I, that's why I wanted to keep reading down because it's going to answer both of them. Matthew 23. Got it? Matthew 23 and I want verse 2. Go ahead. Matthew 23 and verse 2. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Who's reading right here, Christ? Christ. It's in red. So he's reading... Uh, Christ's words. He says, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Read on. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, whatever they tell you, whatever they command you to do, observe. Uh huh. That observe and do. Do it. He said to do it. So what was wrong with the scribes and the Pharisees? Read on. But do not ye after their works, mm -hmm. for they say and do not. They were hypocrites. That's what was wrong with the scribes and the Pharisees. And there's other things too, it outlines in Matthew 23. But go back to Matthew 5 and read that last verse again that you just read. Matthew 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Because they were hypocrites. They weren't keeping God's laws. Right. They were telling people to, but they weren't doing it themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? They were extorting the people, had no mercy, they and were, so forth. They were responsible for the debased condition of the people. That's why he wept over them. 
Mm, we'll get into that too. But, but go ahead. But hey, I can't, man. Uh, let, let me finish this and I'll let you go. Yeah. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Your, your righteousness has to exceed theirs because they're not keeping the laws. So what is God saying? You must keep the laws. But what he meant right there was that they were hypocrites. And what he's saying is, if you're not doing at least that, is what he meant. At least what? At least the effort that they made. No. Read. Read, 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 up, read that again. Okay, it's not at least the effort that they made. Read that part again. Well, what would be the least of theirs? Matthew 5 and verse 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed. Shall what? Exceed. Exceed. Read. The righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. It's not the same level. It's not at least do what they did. No, it's do better than them because they're not doing it. Exceed. They meant authentic. Huh? Authentic versus false is what he was illustrating. Wait, that, that's not what, none of that is mentioned here. Like you're kind of uh, superimposing that into the, into the text. That's not what's being said here. What do you suppose it means? How, how do you be more righteous than them? Okay, let's see what righteousness is. Because they weren't keeping the laws, right? Deuteronomy? He was illustrating. Oh, you got it? He was illustrating. Yeah, Luke. Were, he was illustrating who he was and that they were misleading the people. That ultimately it led to faith in him. Were they misleading them? Actually, they were because. So why did Christ say, "Whatever they tell you to do, do it"? The gospel was present. Knowledge of him was present among them, was it not? They were contending with him already, were they not? They were contending with the Sadducees, with Sadducees too, and with John. Were they making an attempt to keep the people in Judaism? Whoa, 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 whoa. See, this is were, a were, Christian... Were, were, they, were they refuting Christ and trying to say, don't follow this guy? They were, see, hold on. Because they would, see, what it would be... Ju Judaism is not even in the Bible. Like, The word Judaism is not even in there. Whatever faith that those folks were practicing. No, no. no it, it, were, they, it, were they trying to keep the people there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to this. They were trying to keep them to continue sacrificing because that's what got them their wealth. Just like you have these pastors today making people to continue to tithe because that's what gets them their wealth. There's no more tithing. And, and just just like when we come out and we say uh, 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 tithing was, uh, was fruits and vegetables and things of that nature, there's no more tithing this day. In these day and age, pastors get upset at us. The same way that they got it, the same way they're upset with Christ because Christ was telling them, listen, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Who got the sacrifices? The scribes, the Pharisees, the Levites. Christ became that sacrifice. So they no longer had to bring sacrifices. And guess who got pissed off at Christ? But what was the their, people that were receiving him. What was their objective? Why, were they trying to keep him out? Were they trying to say, don't follow this guy and his teaching? Don't believe in Christ. Believe he, he, was, he wasn't teaching anything. His teaching wasn't different. Remember, we read. They were reading out of the Old Testament. That's all that was there. Now, you touched on the holy days, high holy days? Yeah. Were you guys observant of those? Yep, we just got through finishing the first tabernacles. Okay, and that's essential to pleasing God and being obedient? Yes, for, uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, 2.15. Watch, I'm show you. This is Paul. A lot of people mistake Paul's writings. And I'll show you. I'll show you why. Watch what Paul wrote. We're going to get that and we're going to go to Acts. Read that. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions. Do what? Hold the traditions. My brothers, stand fast and hold the tradition. Which ye have been taught. Well, where were they taught from? Back there. Tell Read. me where. Tell me where. From the Old Testament. What qualifies as tradition? What, <laughs> what, what, is, what is historic? I'll, I'll is, tell you. I'll what I'll, is I'll, historic I'll, tradition? I'll tell you right now. Read that. Hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word, by what? By word or our epistle. So, what traditions were they taught to still observe? Acts 18. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. I think it's 21. 18. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead. Tell me about the banquet tradition. Elaborate, please. What's that? You gotta elaborate. You talking about a Jewish tradition? That's something that they do in Israel today? Or something that you can point out in the Bible? The banquet tradition. You should know this. Oh. 
You heard of that before? You ever heard of that before? Uh, we've read the Bible back and forth a couple different times, brother, and uh, you got you to gotta elaborate. That's the tradition. What? That was oral and taught. What banquet tradition? But that's what the Bible's speaking about, right? Nope. No. Why, why wouldn't it? Because it says either by word or a epistle. A banquet, the banquet tradition was by both word and tradition. Uh, what, what, what is the banquet tradition? Can I point it out somewhere in the Bible? No. The, the, wait a minute. Wait, wait, I, that, I'm that portion of scripture doesn't say it has to be pointed out in the Bible. You say that. It's referring to tradition. What tradition are they referring to? Is that all scripture or is it all encompassing tradition? Say that one more time. All scripture or all encompassing tradition? What is the scripture referring to when it says tradition? Is it referring to strictly so, other scriptural tradition or could, is it would you, would as, you, as, would, as it says tradition? Because they had lots of traditions. Would, would, you, would, you, would you consider a heritage a tradition? A heritage? Yeah. What heritage? You? Would you consider someone's heritage their tradition? Like you have an American heritage where they do Fourth of July, Columbus Day, all this other stuff, right? And you have people from. If my family got together at the end of every May for something. No, no, no. And, I'm, I'm talking things, about a, a. Let's say for like a F. Yeah, but, yeah, but, like they, but, but, they, but they didn't do random, just random. Ah. No, no, no. I'm not talking about random. I'm yeah, yeah. But we're talking about in this let's, let's context. Say, let's say a certain ethnicity in the area got together for a certain barbecue like once a year. And they did that generation after generation. We would call that a tradition. Huh? Go ahead. No, it, let's say a certain ethnicity got together for a certain barbecue on a certain weekend. Dude, this is just hypothetical speaking, trying to make it simple. I'm listening, I'm listening. And we did that generation after generation, go back 30, 40, 50, maybe in 100 years. Would that qualify as a tradition? A tradition of man, yeah. Does the Bible specify that they're referring to a scriptural tradition or tradition of man? Yeah, yeah, let's get it. Matthew 15, no, got it, that, 15? That portion right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to specify right here. Because it's all co it all coincides. Nothing is different from the other. It doesn't contradict itself. No, 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 that. No, no, Matthew. Matthew 15 and verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? So they had, the elders, the Pharisees, had their own traditions, right? Okay, let's read on. Let's see. What so traditions is talking about? So have you ever looked at what their traditions were? We're about to, it's about to go into it. I mean, have you yourself looked into that? Yes, well, we're very learned men. Like, we didn't just no, wake I, up one, one I day. That. Nothing but respect. But. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I'm just saying, yes, we've looked into it. But, but, but I got to finish this so that way I can okay. clarify what tradition it is. Okay. All right, go ahead. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, there's no law in the Bible that says that. That says you have to wash your hands before you eat. There's no law that right. says that. But they had a tradition. They're saying they transgress. They were trying to fault them and find sin in them. Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them. This is Christ. He's going to answer the Pharisees that's making up their own traditions versus God's traditions. Read. Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Mm -hmm. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So Christ is reciting what? The Old Testament. And he's saying, you dishonor God by following your tradition. You don't follow the commandments of God. Showing what? Now, Deuteronomy uh, 32? Go ahead. You, I know you got something to say. No, I was just going to say, no, do, you, do you think that that expresses that all of their traditions were inherently bad? No, because they had traditions from God. God gave the Israelites a heritage. Apart from that, let, let's, I don't know. God, no, 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 because, uh, because, because listen, because listen, God gave the Israelites a heritage. He gave them a tradition. Now what these men started doing a thousand something years later was doing their own thing, adding to, just like you have in Christianity today. They add to. Now they do Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all these other holidays that's not even in the Bible, and they find a way to merge it with the Bible. Right. See what I'm saying? It's the same thing. But Christ is saying, no, you transgress by, by your traditions. Follow the tradition that God gave you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain.
IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.